Foreign Service members have always been a key part of the U.S. military that dates back to the American Revolution itself. And it's often because they volunteer to serve that these men and women gain their citizenship sooner. Nearly 11,000 service members were naturalized last year alone. And now the Pentagon is looking to immigrants. Correspondent Evan Lambert is live for us in Washington. Evan, the goal here is to try to overcome years of recruiting shortfalls. Nicole, essentially they are saying anything can help. The military more frequently turning to people who have connections to immigrant communities in the U.S. to find others interested in signing up with Uncle Sam. A major selling point for the legal migrants who do end up joining our military, they're getting a fast track to U.S. citizenship. These are pictures of the Air Force's first 14 recruits to be naturalized as U.S. citizens under this program in April. These are Air Force trainees who became citizens. They came from Cameroon, Jamaica, Kenya, the Philippines, Russia, and South Africa. The program was last in play for the Air Force in 2017 and has in recent months been restarted by that service and the Army. Here on News Nation, we have been telling you about the military's struggles to meet recruiting goals. Pentagon officials say the Army and Air Force are 10,000 recruits short of their goals, while the Navy is 6,000 short. Only the Marines and Space Force are expected to hit those goals. Military officials think that that has to do with increased competition among jobs in the private sector and more Americans not hitting academic and fitness requirements. It's why leaders see the renewal of the Fast Track Citizenship Program as being able to help. The military has also recently started programs to prepare possible recruits for basic training through physical and academic training meant to bring them up to standards. Some of those recruits in the Fast Track Citizenship Program require extra security screening and help filling out forms if they aren't as proficient in English. Nicole. All right. Evan Lambert, live in Washington. Evan, thank you. And for more perspective on this, let's bring in Afghanistan veteran and reporter for Military.com, Steve Faden. Steve, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, this is for legal migrants, not for people uh, who come to, to stay in the country illegally, right? This is for legal migrants immigrants. Right. These are people that, that are here, here legally, and the, the DOD is needing to pull out all the stops to fill in a, a huge recruiting shortfall. As you guys you guys just noted, the Marines and Space Force are the only people on track to fill its ranks, but it's also because they're the smallest branches. The Space Force is only 8,000 people right now. Uh, since 9-11, there's been about 100,000 people who have gained citizenship through, through joining the military. All right, so Steve, another key element of this is using recruiters of a similar background to try uh, to, to speak with and get these potential recruits. Why does that seem to help make a difference? Well, it's because people that might be interested in joining the military, uh, there's a bigger chance if, they, if their first introduction to the military, usually through a recruiter, looks like them. And this is especially important in parts of the military, such as the National Guard, where these people are going to serve in that community. So diversity amongst recruiters is a is a huge uh, thing in the military. That's something they, they strive for with uh, different nationalities and backgrounds to speak to different kinds of people to expand that pool of people as much as they can. Yeah, that representation certainly can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Steve, talk to us about the screening process uh, for these recruits. I know we've talked about it a little bit, but how does it differ uh, from the process of someone who was born in the country uh, mm -hmm. and the process they go through? Well, these people have already been screened to the point where they have green cards and they're going to get the same uh, scrutiny that any other applicant joining the military might get, especially for certain jobs that require clearances, such as a secret security clearance, which a lot of jobs uh, require. And that's not as fancy as it sounds. A lot of people have secret security clearances. It doesn't uh, mean a whole lot. But, uh, you know, these programs, they're not just taking people off the streets from uh, you know, Afghanistan or something and just shoving them into the military. These are people that are properly vetted through legal channels, and uh, they also need to serve honorably in the military to receive that citizenship. So if they get in, they still have to, you know, they can't be committing any crimes and serve honorably. All right. So, Steve, you know, people will have opinions on this, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure, both sides of this. But have you had a chance to speak to members of the military, the people who, you know, are in the, the branches themselves? What, what has been their reaction? I think the people in the military, from what I hear, is they are happy to bring in anyone that meets the standards, uh, and, and they uh, want a diverse pool of people to to build their ranks. I talked to one woman who uh, was a refugee from I Iraq that ended up working with the Americans in that country and earned her citizenship through that way and is among one of the first uh, female combat arms leader, really blazing the trail that way. 
Um, and the military also needs people that uh, can speak multiple languages. That's especially important in special operations uh, right now. So the, these people uh, bring things to the table to the military. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.